Now I'm going to respond to some questions and in the process I encourage you to respond. If you have questions or agreement or disagreement, you can still respond, even though I'm, you know, I'm speaking. And also, um, uh, you know, if you don't understand something, you can ask too. So first I want to uh, respond to self-esteem, uh, self-image. Now I want to tell you that I grew up in a family that I was not encouraged to speak at all. At home, we hardly speak. Also, because of the um, lack of self-esteem, and I always thought people are not listening to me. So sometimes when I spoke, I finished one part of the sentence, I, I, and then I stopped, because I thought people were not interested. So I, I did not finish my sentence. And I kept talking like that for a long time, until I became a Christian. And then I was suddenly changed. Now, but I know most people are not changed so quickly. But after the initial change, it's still a long, long way to change. So I will talk about how, how um, my path of change to encourage you. But because it's my story, I, I just make it brief, my part. But and then I will encourage you how to change, how to, um, how you can too raise up your self image. Now, for myself, um, first. Uh, when, in the, when I was in the middle school, uh, when I met all these schoolmates, because I went to a very good middle school in Hong Kong, it's very famous. And all the other students are very smart. They're very good in school. And so I felt inferior. And I just don't want to talk too much. So I did not make many friends in the middle school. Uh, and I. You know, later I only have one group of friends, and and then I stick with that group of friends. I did not. Uh, I know many people, but I did not build up friendship with many people. And uh, and when I spoke very often, I just uh, you know sp spoke half of the said half of the sentence and then stopped. And um, now after I became a Christian, what happened was because when I went to the church and everybody listened to me, I was surprised. They look at me when I share, and then I get encouraged by that. And I kept talking about myself and my questions. And then I, so I started to communicate much more. And when I did start to do that, my communication improved greatly. But still, a lot of problem. For instance, sometimes when people ask me difficult questions, like, why did you do something like that? Why was it difficult for you? Something like that. I would just stay quiet. I just won't be able to answer. It, it took me a long time to learn to respond with confidence. Now, my first wife who has passed away has helped me greatly with this. She told me this. She said, um, you know, when you are in an opportunity, in Chinese we have this saying, you know, when you hit a snake with a stick, with a stick, the snake would go up the stick. Uh, I, I don't know if you know this, you know, if you use a whip, it cannot go up the whip, but then if you use a stick, the stick can, the snake can climb up the, the stick. And then in Chinese we have this saying, if someone's talking to you, then you climb up like a snake immediately respond to that. Now actually that's an a important key in communication. For instance, someone says, oh, I'm unhappy. Now this, I'm talking about communication now, but I'm saying building up the confidence. Now when someone says he's unhappy or he's burdened, he's busy, he has opened up his, himself. He has talked about his inner condition. He has talked about his needs. And that's where we can enter. Now that's the key to confidence to respond to people and also what to talk about. When someone says, oh, I'm unhappy, then he has opened up himself. And I, I can say, um, oh, I'm sorry to hear that you're unhappy. To respond directly to what he said. And I can say, tell me why you are unhappy. And instead of teaching, you know, the bad way to do it at that time is to teach, you know, and then we start to teach how to, how to, you know, overcome your 
sadness. And then people would say, well, you're a teacher, you talk too much, and then people don't like to respond. But if we listen and say, respond to the feeling, I know it's not easy. I know I have been sad too, and I know that it's, you know, you can be unhappy. And, and uh, tell me about it. So we, we, res we can respond. When we respond, now, after I became a Christian, uh, the reason I became a Christian was like this, that I want to find, find out the meaning of life. And I want to find out if there's a God. Because I thought, if I only live, you know, 80 years, 90 years, and then I die, and I said, what's the meaning of life? You know? And then I wonder if that's it. You know? And then I said, at first, I said, I just have fun in this period of time when I live. But then after one day, I heard that there's a God from a physics book that says that you know, the world is so complicated, maybe it's created by God. And then I, I, I was very interested. And later, a Christian talked to me, and I said, I want to know if there are proofs of God. And when she told me the proof, one proof, one simple proof, I was very interested. I want to find the truth. And then I studied evidence, and after I became a Christian, I said, so many people in the world don't know Jesus. I want to tell people. So I kept telling my friends, my family members, my schoolmates, I kept telling about uh, Jesus you know, to everyone. And also in the church, I, I built up the confidence. And then I uh, had the confidence to relate, you know, to talk with many people. When I talk with many people, I find out one thing. Most people are not happy. When I try to talk with people, I, when I try to help people, I find that most people have needs. But when you are afraid to talk to people, most people are afraid to talk to people. Most people don't have confidence to talk to people. Now, I was not like this in the past. Now you see that when I talk, I have confidence. I'm connected to you. I can respond to your question. Now, this is totally different person from the past. So in the past, I had no confidence because I thought what I said is not important. I cannot have an impact on people and people might not like what I say. And maybe that's, that's you too. Maybe your ability to communicate is very low. And God gave me this encouragement to you. If you improve 1% a day, 100 days you, you improve 100%. <laughs> of course, we cannot improve so quickly. But even 1% is not very fast. So if today you can see my confidence, and then you see that, yes, I can do something. All people like us, lack confidence. They are shy. Now, you also notice when I, when I speak, I look at your eyes one by one. Have you noticed this? I look at each one of you one by one. I am having a person-to-person -person communication. I'm not just speaking to a group of people. I'm speaking to individuals, each individual. That came from confidence. So I know everyone has needs. So Sometimes we look at people and they say, wow, they look so, you know, everything seems so well. You know, they, they are so confident, they have money, they're successful, and then we think that they would despise us when we speak to them. That's what I thought. But I realized that actually they too have their needs. They do have their problems because I have met many rich people. I've met rich people, I've met successful people, I've met, because as a pastor, I've met, I've met all kinds of people. And because my position as a pastor, people come to me generally to ask for help. And these people ask for help. Now some of these people have been serving God, even pastors came to me and asked for help. And then I realized that even pastors have needs. Now it doesn't mean I'm higher than they are. I'm just saying we all have needs. I have my needs too. I, I would share with you my feeling as a pastor too in a moment so I have needs too everyone has needs and then we just help each other that way we don't have to be superior to help them I'm just a person I have learned something from God I can share with other people that way I don't feel I don't have to say I have to be higher than everyone before I speak and then you say it's okay to be weak 
it's okay not to be all capable. I just help people, and then that way it will take away your shyness. Now, one that's one one point is to say people have needs, and the second is we are we are very very special. When we love God, you know, we seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to us. We, then we have a very important position in God. And let me tell you this. I, I share with you this, not to be proud, but just tell you, if you respond to God and love God, how God will raise you up. Now first, our position as a Christian is very high. But if you love God, your position is even higher. Because the Bible says, High as the heaven is above the earth, so great is his love toward those who fear him. Mm -hmm. So when you fear him, that means, now, fear God doesn't mean I'm afraid of God. It means I honor God. I dare not sin. I re respect him. If I respect him, far high as the heaven is above the earth, so great is his love toward me. So his love toward me is very great. So we are, we are very special. And God is like the mother cannot forget her suckling child. And then, so God will not forget us, that God think about us all the time. So each one of you are very, very special. Now, in order to put this in your mind, in your heart, it takes time. Every day you wake up, you say, God loves me. I'm very special. God is looking at me. God is ministering to me. He's in front of me and behind me. Psalm 139 verse 5 is in front of me and behind me. He's laying his hand upon me. So I'm very special in the sight of God. And then, each day when we declare that, God is loving me, God cares about me, God sees that I'm important, then when you say it every day, it will sink into our being. It will sink into our being, and then we have more and more confidence. And, and when we help, now you can start with helping children, because children are more humble. <laughs> When we help children, we see that, oh yes, they all have needs. And then when I help them, I see that I can help them. And then you start to help the church members, not just relate to them. But when you see a need, but we don't have to be like a teacher. We can be a work, a walk, you know, someone who walks with them. And, oh, I know you have this need. I know you're facing this difficulty. I'm, I have faced this too. And uh, tell me more about it. So listening, and then responding and say, yes, uh, I know that it's not easy, and can I share with you how I changed? So ask for permission before I change, before I share. That way, people don't feel that you're a teacher. And then when you share, and then the person says, it's hard to do. And then you can ask, everything he says, I can respond. Why is it hard? Uh, tell me how is it hard. That's listening when it says it's hard. And we ask, uh, in what way is it hard? And, and how do you think you can overcome that? So that way, when you help members, when you can relate to people, then when you go outside, then you can also relate to people. And also our confidence. Now, just now I've named two things to raise up the confidence. Number one, actually I said a second is, because of how God looks at us. And number two, we know that everyone has needs. People look very strong and firm and educated and everything, have everything, but actually they all have their needs too. So we don't have to think that we have to be superior to them uh, to be accepted by them. When we have confidence, even a little child, you know, when I went to different places, sometimes some little child have confidence to come to me. They will come to me for prayer. They come to me just to touch me. They look at me. And I see that even a child can have the confidence to talk to an adult, to come to an adult, to have confidence. When they have confidence, I would not say, you're just a little child, I don't want to talk to you. I would respect him as a little child who has confidence. So we don't have to be super great. Okay, now the third part that builds up our self-confidence is our ability to relate to people. When you can relate to people and when you can talk to people, and then you find that, yes, you can relate to people, you can help people, and then you will have more confidence. Yes, I can do it. For instance, God has raised me up first, you know, after I experienced the Holy Spirit in 1998, 
that I, now first as a pastor I've helped many people and at that time I want to tell you I, I want to share with you even as a pastor at that time I also felt lonely sometimes I I always fear now even now sometimes some that feeling comes up I'm I'm saying every person sometimes has loneliness but for now, I will keep telling myself, God is loving me, I am important in His sight, and He will continue to bless me and use me, and I can have confidence. But once in a while, that now there is a little poem I, I, I read one time, it's in Chinese. It's something like this. A pastor, after the meeting, when everyone has left, he calls the church door, and he is inside the church, and then, he found himself alone and then he felt lonely a very simple poem the pastor after everyone has left could feel lonely because the people has left and a pastor doing ministry and if he finds that the ministry is not good could feel lonely and helpless how can I do better so each person has this experience because of men the sin of mankind we all can have lack of self-confidence you know for me too so as a pastor many times i have now when i speak you know when i preach i have confidence but when i um am alone or when i think about do the people really accept me do the people really like me am i changing them then I found that I had, you know, lack of confidence. Now, after experience of the Holy Spirit, it has helped me greatly because I pray for people and experience the Holy Spirit, and many people changed, and I saw people change instantly, and and I can raise them up. Then, what I'm saying is, our ability to relate to people and help people, it give us stronger confidence too. Because now you imagine a Christian, he. He believes that God loves him, he's very important. But everything he does is, he fails. He fails in his work, he fails in his relationship with people, no one likes him, and he has no friends, and when he does ministry, he cannot, he, he's never successful. Can he keep that belief that he's really important in the sight of God? Because he cannot apply what he believes to his life. We have to learn to apply what we believe to our life daily life when we believe we're important and believe everyone is important I don't have to be more important than other people everyone is important I always tell people yes you are important you can do great things I have done great things you can do great things too and then I always encourage people then so when I when I do that when I see everyone is important and I can raise up the confidence then I see that God is using me that gives me confidence too at the same time his love for me gives me confidence at the same time I see that people have needs and also that I can help them now I, I'll pause a little bit here to let you ask questions um, that in these three areas first the belief that I'm important because God loves me now this part I will have a more complete teaching on Monday about how to enjoy God. God is loving me. I can enjoy Him. He's so wonderful. He cares for me and He really sees uh, my needs and also see how I love Him. If you believe that, then you have more, more confidence. Now, I have experienced God in many, many ways. I, I thank God. Now, this time when I went to Uganda, when I went to the other church, I met the 10th person who have received message from God before I went there this is the tenth person there was one person in South Africa I mean out of all these people this is one special case that she had a dream the night before I went I arrived and then she dreamed in the dream she was chased by someone and she was afraid and she was in great fear and then she ran and ran and ran to a house and then she she saw me inside and then I said to her, do you like me to pray for you? And she said yes. And then the moment I touched her, 
Immediately she was filled with joy and love. And then she woke up full of joy. And then she said, it's me. Because the face was the same. And also, uh, the, uh, that I offered to pray. And then when I prayed, she experienced joy and peace. And also, the, my message is also about joy and peace. And so she said, so wonderful. And she told me that. And I put that online. You look for South Africa Pastor Yip, Y-I-P. That's my last name, Y-I-P. And then you can see that video. And, and this time I came, another woman said, no one told her that there is a meeting. But she just saw in a, a vision that God told her that there is a guest speaker coming. And then she just asked, and then she found out that there is, yes, there is a guest speaker coming, and then she came. And this is the 10th person. What I'm saying is, when we love God, God honors them. When you really love God in your heart, you say, God is so good. I want, I want to love God. I want to have a good relationship with Him, and I want to serve God. I want to do what God likes. I don't do it for, for my reputation. I don't do it for money. I don't do it for other reasons. I just do it because I love God. I want God to be happy. When you have this pure heart for God, God knows it. And then He will bless you. You know, one time I, I, I miss a plane. And I pray. And then later, they found out the plane returned. Came back. And my wife said, when I told her, she said, God really loves you. Because... When you miss the plane, the plane could come back because I asked the people that said that the plane could not take off. <laughs> so without me, the plane could not take off. I'm just telling you, you know, I have experiences like this after I really follow God. And that really builds up my confidence that God really is happy that I love Him. And I'm saying, you too, when you have this heart to, to bless people, to follow God, just to do the things to please God, not for yourself, not to raise up yourself, then God will raise you up and God will confirm you, give you confirmation. And when you receive many confirmation like that, it will build up your confidence too. Okay, so I'm asking you now, anything you want to ask just now about building up the confidence, any question you want to ask, and maybe in your specific situation.